Hello, fellow truckers, and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. We are continuing on our way through the career mode in the International 9900i, painted in international orange. Today, we have a very heavy cable reel heading from Kingman, Arizona to Oakland, California. The current trip time says it's going to be about... Why did my truck turn off? <laughs> the current trip time says it's going to be about... Uh, well, it doesn't give me an... 13, it says it's about 13 hours. Sorry, losing my losing track of time. Uh, actually, I'm not sure which way we're supposed to be going right now. So, okay. It wants us to turn back around and come this way. We'll stop for fuel right around there. So, let me get turned around, hopefully. down some of their cones, but that's much faster than trying to go all the way down and make a U-turn over there. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's get down the road a ways. Uh, you can see down there the bottom right gauge where, the, where that you can actually see is our fuel gauge. So we're going to want to stop for some fuel here in a minute. Current speed limit says 65, but that's going to turn into 55 here in a second. Back into the town of Kingman. Try right, to make sure I don't encroach on the other lane because the last thing we want to do is damage our load if we can avoid it. Sells a little bit slowed down here. I don't necessarily worry too much. Then turn right. I don't necessarily worry too much about speed limits because I have most of the I have all the fines and stuff turned off. Take the next ride. But I also don't want to end up damaging my truck or my load because that's a big waste of money. I think for this though, I'm definitely going to need because of how long the. Generally, when you have these super articulated loads, you need a little bit more space to turn. And make sure you don't hit anything. Thanks for slowing down, dude. Made it so much harder for me to get on the freeway. I had some momentum and he decided to slow down. Like, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, we can get on the... I could have swore it told me that we were going to have some... Oh, okay, it's up there. We were going to have a gas station here. Uh, 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 a gas station up here somewhere. So hopefully we can drive down this way just a little bit, get ourselves put into the gas station, get fully fueled up, and we should have enough to get us to our destination. I am looking forward to getting out of this truck again and back into something just a little bit more modern. Not because I don't like these trucks, but just not having a lot of the information that, that comes with the more modern trucks is just a little bit frustrating. So hopefully we'll see some fuel icons pop up on the GPS over there here in just a minute. And we'll set this. We'll set the. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll set the cruise control to uh, 75 so that we can be right there at the speed limit. According to the map, we're supposed to see fuel here in a little bit. Staring at the GPS, waiting for it to pop up. Come on. Continue straight. Hmm. We're gonna get to the. F okay, it's coming up here pretty soon. So I want to make sure that I don't end up missing the exit. So I'm hoping that it's going to pop up before whatever exit it is gets up, like, before we get to it. I hope we see it on the map there. 
because I don't want to bypass the fuel because I don't know when the next fuel is going to be. I, I tend to be pretty conservative about making sure I refuel, even in real life. I, I generally fill up at about a half a tank just to make sure. I know that carries around a bunch of extra weight and all of that, but you know, I'd rather have I'd rather carry around the extra fuel and be relatively sure I'm not going to run out than to you know, wait until I get to empty and then I have an issue where I can't get fuel. Right, I'm pretty sure... Hold on. Is it this one? Hmm. Okay, so is this one of those rare ones that's actually just like right off the freeway? Like I don't even have to really go down a street or anything, it's just sitting there, right? it's, a, it's a, like a travel stop or... Oh, okay. How convenient. I love it when it's like this. We get to just pull straight off the freeway, right up to a pump, get our fuel, and be on our way. Super convenient. Okay. Alright, well, let's fill up on some fuel then. <laughs> I really like it when they make it super easy like that. It's too bad. You see, you see fuel stations like this a lot in Euro Truck Simulator, where they're just like kind of right on the freeway like that. You don't see it too much in America. You drive around, you drive all around America, and you have to completely get off the freeway and drive, and usually drive down a road a little bit. Like you'll find travel centers and stuff like that, but even the travel centers require you to get off the freeway, turn onto another road, and then drive like a quarter or half or even a couple of miles down the road to go get to the to the travel center. So that's one of the things that they, they didn't really do too, do too much of around here because, I, don't, I mean, I don't know why. I'm, it's more expensive to get property right next to the freeway. I don't know. But it's just not something you see very much. So it's super convenient when we get... Oh, are we in California? Well, I'll do 65. <laughs> I'll do a happy medium between what we were doing and what I, what, 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 we, what we are required to do and what, we're, uh, what we'd like to be doing. Because obviously 75 would be better, but whatever. Ugh, climbing up this hill is like struggling. But hopefully, once we get over the top of it, once we crest this and we're able to hopefully start accelerating, it won't be as big of a deal. Oh, look at the jet the jetliner. Is he landing? He's gotta be landing. Looks like he's going down. big field over there. All right, come on, get us over the hill. Most of this trip is in California, so nah. <laughs> guess we'll the, the the overall trip is too long to fit into one episode so I guess we can afford I guess we can afford to do the speed limit since we're gonna be splitting this video up it's not gonna hurt anything so if my lights okay yeah I don't think that the game actually renders headlights during the daytime you may have them turned on, but I don't think they actually render during the daytime. Get over this hill. Hopefully we can get back up to speed. That box truck. 
one day I would like to, I mean, if I can't do the sailboat thing, one day I would like to uh, turn a box truck into an RV and just do it that way. Because the convenience of being able to have just a single vehicle to drive around rather than having to tow a trailer behind you. I like the idea of that and just the stealth aspect of being able to just, you know, if as long as you don't, if you don't put any windows in it and like maybe just do a skylight for the natural light and, uh, you know, you keep the outside looking almost completely like a box truck, then you can pretty much park wherever you want. You don't have to worry about, uh, you don't have to worry about anybody bothering you or the, the police coming to tell you you have to leave or anything like that. Because, you know, if you're not hurting anybody, who cares? There's too many people that care about things that don't matter. Please pull in for a vehicle inspection. Okay, I guess we'll do that. My uh, my adherence to the rules of the game or the rules of the road when I'm doing this simulator are fast and loose. If I feel like putting up with them, I'll put up with them, and if I don't, then I don't. <laughs> Just, we have time in this episode because. Um, you know, the load itself is just way too, the, the, the distance and the time it's going to take to get there is just way too long to get done in one episode. So might as well split it up and slow down and do all that. All right, cool. Gross vehicle weight, 111,679 111, pounds. There you go. Now you know. Start getting over. Sorry there, dude. Um, I'm a real person and you're not. <laughs> That's the way that works. That's the way that works. I know some people. Uh, I know some people play this game and they treat the AI car, the the AI vehicles, as, like they would in real life. And I'm like, mm, I mean, that's that's nice of you, I guess. But uh, nobody's feelings are getting hurt when I barge out in front of somebody. Obviously, if I were doing this in real life, I would be I would be very nice. I'm very nice in real life when I'm driving in, in my vehicle. I treat people with respect and I do all of that stuff. But this is a video game, and it's uh, we have we have places to be. <laughs> oh, look at the plane coming, going to do some crop dusting probably. I wanted to do that for a time. Uh, I was in a part 141 flight school. Uh, Oh, I think over, I think right around 10 years ago at this point, I got my private pilot license done, um, and I was working on my instrument, and then life kind of got in the way, and I had to give it up. But I was seriously considering going down, uh, going the ag route when it came to my pilot career. I, I thought that would have been a really cool. I thought that would have been a really cool job to do. Flying planes around like a fighter, f flying flying around in, a, in what's like a fighter plane, dropping chemical bombs on plants. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't get any closer to you don't get any closer to a fighter a fighter jet than that outside of the military outside of doing maybe like stunt flying or whatever but I mean you, you need to be even in, you need to be in an even more select community to be able to do that if I could find honestly if I could find a company that would uh, completely pay for my training to become an AG pilot I would seriously consider it but I don't know. I mean, I guess they don't care that I'm the I'm in my I'm in my early 40s at this point. And, um, you know, generally pilots have a shelf life as far as how old they can be. But realistically, that's only as far as I, if I remember correctly, that's only really for passenger liners. They at least at least when I was going through the course, there was a mandatory retirement age for passenger liners at 60. You couldn't fly you couldn't fly passenger liners anymore after the age of 60. But yeah, if I could find if there was a if there was a company that wanted to pay for my training and in exchange for you know one or two years of uh, one or two years of uh, you know agreeing to work for them, dude. <laughs> and we need a lot more of that. We need a lot more apprenticeship kind of things coming in rather than everybody, all of these companies expecting everybody to invest in something and they don't even know, you know? Like they're going to put themselves in 30, 40, 30, 30 or 40 years of debt on something they don't even know if they want to do. Whereas, you know, a company could invest that money and, you know, have a minimum amount of service that they have to complete to accommodate that and then if the person decides they don't want to do that anymore they've only invested four years of their life rather than you know 
<laughs> a ridiculous number. I know that I know one of the reasons why is that they don't. There, there's no way to know whether the person is capable of. Com okay. I want to make sure. Okay, so this whole thing is just turning into a road. I was, I was, I saw the change in the direction. And I'm like, uh, let me focus right now because the last thing we need is to miss our turn. Okay, let me finish getting this turn done. And back onto our speed. Because I know the last, like, not everybody can be a pilot. So, you know, it's one of those things where, I mean, I, I suppose they could come out with some kind of an aptitude test. You know, are you, are you even capable of, do you have the, do you have the, the mental, uh, mental faculties and physical ability to become a pilot? You know, I just, I don't know. I think, I, I, really, I really wish that we would move into a phase of, I really wish we would move into a phase of life where businesses and stuff are investing in people again, rather than just expecting everybody to come with the skills that they want ready-made. They've gotten used to, you know, people spending all this money trying to learn skill sets in classrooms and stuff rather than just bringing people in and training them on the job. And I think on the job training is way more important than a lot of the other things that you could go do. I can tell I have a four year degree and I can tell you that four year degree didn't really teach me anything that I didn't already know. Like it taught me some technical information on some things that maybe I could have looked up if I needed it. but. Like I have a four year business degree and you know, I didn't, I don't, I don't really know any more about business than I did when I started, <laughs> you, know I, you know what I mean? So it's like, um, uh, and you know, a lot of that is just, you get out of your degree. Okay, well, this is going to be one of those things where exit we're going right. to ignore because for whatever reason they decided, nope, we're putting a block in front of you. Already going to take long enough to get where we're going without arbitrary blockages in the road. So, as I said, my adherence to this kind of stuff depends on how I feel, and I don't feel like dealing with it. Moving right along. Okay, so uh, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you're going to get out of your your college education if you go. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. But honestly, that's kind of the point. Like, there's a lot of people that go to college to get the degree, to get the check mark, to have the document in their in their portfolio, and they didn't really get anything out of it. And uh, you know, it's it's much harder to fake your way through on the job training because the people who actually care about your job performance are, are, are there teaching you what you need to know and you're either learning it or you're not. Whereas, you know, a college or a university or whatever it is, is just trying to get your money. That's all they care about. They want to get your tuition and as long as you're doing the bare minimum, they'll let you squeak through and the bare minimum changes depending on how their financial portfolio is looking. So that's something to think about if you're looking at, if you're if you're somehow one of the younger people who watch my channel and you're thinking about college, keep that in mind. Uh, a degree doesn't really mean what it used to. Part of it's because part of it is because our education system has shifted. Our university system has shifted from caring about quality to caring about money. That's that's part of it. Um, the the standards for a lot of schools has dropped precipitously because. They're almost, they're almost solely concerned about making money rather than actually providing a good education. That's number one. But then number two is just the fact that so many people have a degree now that if you want to compete, if you want to, there's no, it's not really a competitive edge anymore. It's more along the lines of, you know, it's like, it's like the high, high school diploma used to be. You need to have one if you want to even be, well, let me let me let me rephrase that because that's not necessarily a true statement. I was going to say that you need to have one if you want to even have a if you even want to be considered because you know how it was 20, 20 30 years ago. You had if you didn't have a high school diploma, you were at a disadvantage to everybody else because you know every, you couldn't even complete the basic requirement. So now it's the the, the four year degree has 
replace the high school diploma as kind of the default thing that you need. But then at the same time, um, I don't know about every business, but I know a lot of businesses out there don't give two craps about your degree. They see the degree on there and they're like, okay, I don't. They they don't even a lot of them, a lot of them don't even notice that you have a degree on your resume. It's not even they don't even look at that anymore. They're looking at your work experience. They're work. They're looking at your accomplishments that you've made. They're looking at a lot of different things that have nothing to do with the you know fifty, seventy, a hundred thousand dollars that you spent on an education, because. Um, so many people have gone through the de through degree programs that doesn't really tell them anything about you anymore. It just means, oh, they went through a degree program, okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, I've, n I've never been asked about my degree, not once. I don't even know if they if, if they even saw it on the resume. They they care about what you what you what you bring to the table as far as you as an individual. So I don't know. I just uh, I don't know. It's it's hard. It's hard to know. It's hard to know for sure everything about a subject. But I think that we're moving into a place where hopefully, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping we're moving into a place where companies are going to be forced to go back to a model where they're investing in people and having to train them on on the job so that they can actually get quality people. All right. So we have a nice rest stop coming up here where. 20 plus minutes in and we, we're about we're actually at the uh, we're actually at about the halfway point of the journey so we're gonna go ahead and pull off the road here pull into the rest stop and uh, call it a day hopefully you guys are having lots of fun be sure to click that like button if you are so that the YouTube algorithm knows and sends the video out to as many people as possible uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already so that when the next video comes out it will show up in your video feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content so be sure to click that join button, check out the list of options that are there and decide if any of those are right for you. Uh, your direct support is greatly appreciated and a critical component to helping to turn this into a full-time gig so please seriously consider it. Again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed the ride and I'll see you for the next one.